Here we've got it. We've been waiting. Live pictures. There's the queen, President Trump. Uh, and there she is, First Lady Melania Trump. These are the first photos as uh, everyone has been waiting um, to get their eye on them before this uh, state dinner. The rolled carpet has clearly been uh, rolled out by the royals. So let's go straight in to, to what we're seeing and messages uh, that this is sitting and how this, this dinner has taken so long just to prepare for. Max Foster and Kate Bennett are in front of Buckingham Palace for me. And, and as we stay on these pictures, uh, Max and Kate, tell me more about the the you know the 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 choice of dress and the preparation <laughs> Well, this, uh, for a lot of royal fans, this is what it's all about. It's tiaras and it's uh, ball gowns and it's white tie. So, well, I'm going to let Kate take away the well, fashion. Uh, I commentary. mean, Melania Trump's her dress is not strapless, but it's sleeveless, and she's wearing white, which is actually uh, Michelle Obama wore a white gown for her state banquet at the palace when she was here uh, several years ago. I mean, it's simple. She wore white earlier today. I don't know if there's any symbolism. Of the color white. I in think the it's UK. white tie event. The Queen's wearing white. You know, white is the theme yeah. for the evening. We it, we do have the menu. Yeah, we do have the menu. So so the first course will be the steam fillet of halibut brook. Mm. Uh, main course: a saddle of new season Windsor lamb with herb stuffing, spring vegetables, and port sauce. And for dessert, strawberry sable. I don't know what that is. With lemon verbena cream. So not Donald Trump's typical steak and ice cream sundae which was on a lot of the menus if you remember their trip to japan last week a yeah. lot of the uh, food that they ate there was uh, was meat and potatoes this is not bad uh, always interesting as well brooke um the seating plan um so obviously uh, the queen will be sitting next to donald trump we've got all of mr trump's five well the, the you know the, the the adult children as well and 16 members of the royal family so we know that charles is next to mrs trump camilla's on the other side of the president and next to willie johnson who's the ambassador looking down we can see that ivanka um, is sitting with the countess of wessex sophie and uh kate is next to stephen mnuchin uh, the treasury secretary of course so uh, these are very carefully sort of prepared seating plans the only person that won't have their name on their place will be the queen that's a long mm. tradition and the four days it took to set this table, Brooke, it looks like a uh, job well done. Well, <laughs> I mean, well, don't they, don't they, say, you guys, I look at that moment, I... don't they measure? I mean, every yeah. chair to the table, yeah. to the forks and the knives and the plates, it is precise. Yeah, so each plate is exactly 18 inches, 45 centimeters apart. They measure it with these sticks and every chair an equal distance from the table as well. And the same goes for the hundreds of glasses as well, all over the table. And oh, they walk the in, standing. move the chairs, pick up a glass. I'm yep. delighted Toast time. to welcome you and Mrs. Trump to Buckingham Palace Let's this listen. evening. Just 12 months after our first meeting at Windsor. Visits by American presidents always remind us of the close and long-standing friendship between the United Kingdom and the United States. And I'm so glad that we have another opportunity to demonstrate the immense importance that both our countries attach to our relationship. In the coming days, you will see some of our most treasured historical buildings speak to the business leaders whose expertise and innovation drive our economies and meet members of our armed services, past and present. You will also travel to Portsmouth and Normandy to commemorate the 75th anniversary of D-Day. On that day, and on many occasions since, the armed forces of both our countries fought side by side to defend our cherished values of liberty and democracy. Mr. President, in your State of the Union address this year, you paid tribute to some of the American heroes who risked their lives. And we owe an immeasurable, inimmeasurable debt to the British, American, and Allied soldiers who began the liberation of Europe on the 6th of June, 1944. I paid my first state visit to your country 
at the invitation of President Eisenhower. As Supreme Allied Commander, he had ultimate responsibility for the execution of the Normandy landings. In his headquarters in St. James's Square, not far from Buckingham Palace, British and American officers worked closely together to plan the freedom of a continent. And it would be no exaggeration to say that millions of lives depended on their common endeavor. As we face the new challenges of the 21st century, the anniversary of D-Day reminds us of all that our countries have achieved together. After the shared sacrifices of the Second World War, Britain and the United States worked with other allies to build an assembly of international institutions to ensure that the horrors of conflict would never be repeated. While the world has changed, we are forever mindful of the original purpose of these structures, nations working together to safeguard a hard-won peace. Of course, it is not only our security which unites us, but our strong cultural links and shared heritage. Every year, there are almost four million visits by Americans to the United Kingdom, with a great number claiming British descent. And with your own Scottish ancestry, Mr. President, you too have a particular connection to this country. We are also bound by the strength and breadth of our economic ties as the largest investors in each other's economies. British companies in the United States employ over one million Americans, and the same is true vice versa. Mr. President, as we look to the future, I'm confident that our common values and shared interests will continue to unite us. Tonight, we celebrate an alliance that has helped to ensure the safety and prosperity of both our peoples for decades, and which I believe will endure for many years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you all to rise and drink a toast to President and Mrs. Trump, to the continued friendship between our two nations, and to the health, prosperity, and happiness of the people of the United States.